there, and welcome to part two in Airbrush Noob. Def Eldar Defense Walls. Eldar Defense Walls? Eldar Defense. Anyway, you can see the walls are all ready to go. We're gonna do the back sides. We've already got the varnish cured, cleared, all ready to go. And I'm gonna use some Citadel Air. I'm gonna use Bane Blade Brown uh, as the base for the bone on the back side of the walls. And then I will finish it off with some Terminus Stone. Um, I think that's the plan, I think. Although, I'm kind of, there's not a lot of room in the back. It's already kind of got like this texture on there. You can see some of the overspray. Well, you might not be able to see it too well. A little bit of gold overspray on some of the back side, but that's all right. And yeah, so basically what it's going to be is the Bane Blade is going to build up, leaving it kind of dark at the top. And then when I come in with the Terminus Stone, the Terminus Stone is just going to stay right near the bottom central area, kind of in this area right here. So, yeah, that's the plan anyway. Got my compressor going, got the brush going. I already whipped out my uh, one color here. Uh, he's using transparent red. And I didn't show it on camera, but I was playing around with it and I was using it just on the ends of the guns, closest to the, um, the barrels. And I actually kind of like the effect it gave me. And so I might do, oh, and I did a little bit more of the shield. I brought more red down onto the shield. And I didn't lose too much of the uh, luminance of the uh, metallics. And so I'm, you know, I'm debating whether or not I want to continue on using that red to, you know, um, pick up the walls a bit more. I don't know. Not that the, I don't think the walls are red enough. The walls are, are red enough for me. And I like you know, how it's got this shine to it and everything like that. I was considering doing like battle damage on the walls, but then decided against it. Uh, I didn't bother, um, you know, because I kind of like it pristine. Citadel Air Paint Pots. Pain in the bum. Why? Because it's a paint pot. Now, I don't have my pipette available right now, uh, but normally I would use a pipette to extract the paint, but I don't have it at the moment. So I just got to pour it. Spraying it around 30 PSI using my Badger Patriot 105 and let's get to work. Kind of like that, I'm thinking. I don't think that's too bad. I kind of like it. Even just a little bit dark up in the top points area. Uh, mainly because I just don't want to hit any of the overspray, but I guess you can hit it. Yeah. Yeah, we're fine. Oh, let's grab another wall section. Plus two provides a nice contrast. Um, you know, with a shiny side and then a, a fairly dull side on the other side, you know, so. Keep things somewhat interesting. I like Bane Blade Brown as a base for a lot of bone colors. Some of you may have noticed in other videos that I've done. Um, just, you know, personal preference. Uh, just because it has that kind of desaturated bone color already into it. And so, that's why I use it often. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm liking that. Yeah. Yeah, that's the ticket. Anybody remember what that one was from? What that line was from? Again, as you can see, a lot of people have asked in the past uh, how well does Citadel's uh, air flow out of the brush. As you can see, it flows quite nicely. You can see this color here, this Bane Blade Brown, it's sitting on top of black quite nicely. So, I think that kind of answers your question. 
Again, as I've mentioned before, stating my opinion on these colors, dry tip, uh, stating my opinion on these colors is the only thing is I don't care for is the price tag and the fact they're in a paint pot. I don't care for that at all. No, sir, don't like it. But other than that, they flow just fine. Flow just as good as any other color does. At least as far as I can tell, I've only used a few different airbrush colors in the past, so you know it's not like I have used every airbrush line there is. I mean, heck, I'm still getting used to the airbrush myself. You know, I I still consider myself a a student of the uh, of the instrument itself. So. Yeah. yeah, I kind of like that. The gold and the bone. That way you get busted both worlds. Some people said, no, do the bone color, do the bone color. And I thought, eh, I don't want to really do bone. But now, get to have our cake and eat it too, as the expression goes. Not entirely sure what that expression fully means, but... Man, this thing gets dry with ass. Maybe we should turn the piss side down again. I know it's going to come rushing out here in a second. Dry tip. And of course, anybody who, you know, is wondering, well, what does he do for dry tip? Well, this is what I do. This is how I do. I also have a video on, uh, you know, dry tip as well. Then, you always keep your, your tip moist. Just to avoid the dry tip. You heard me. Kind of digging that. More and more I look at it, the more and more I'm liking it. So, definitely going to keep it. Just need a little bit more, just to top off the tank, as it were. Mm -hmm. Oh, too much. It's okay. See, and that's why I don't like it. Get all this scooching down the side and get it all running down your paint pot and being a general pain. Whoop. Whoop. It's okay, it's already varnished and protected. I was initially thinking of getting kind of fancy and doing the, uh, using a stencil and putting like a texture back to it, but I don't know. How fancy can we get, you know? Dry tip. But I will say, again, I am totally, totally digging the bone color in the back. Bone in the back.
It's not bad at all. Check for uniformity here. Uniformity. Make sure they get these ends here. Yeah, good with these ends. Up all the pink. So time to flush, and then we'll go. Oh, there's a piece of schmutz in there. My water. My water. What a water. I almost had a tune playing there. <laughs> so I'll flush it a couple times and see how it's still pretty murky like the color. So I just pour it right out. I don't bother spraying it all the way through because there's no reason to atomize all that crap into the air. And so see now it's not quite as opaque. Then take a paper towel, give our bowl a wipe. Any residual paints? No, it's still murky down there. See, it's still murky. Sometimes it seems like colors, um, some colors are just harder to flush than others. I find with red and purple, see, you know, it's coming right back. White is also another one, for whatever reason, it just seems to keep coming back. Can't get rid of it. Let's give it some Windex, maybe that'll help. A dislodge, maybe some paint is sitting somewhere, making itself at home. Who knows? Who entirely knows? Okay. Give it another wipe. Let's have a look at the water. Yeah, see the water's running clearer now. So you can see the bottom now. The Windex, the Windex flushed it right out for us, thankfully. Good old Windex. Something was, there was a little bit of paint hiding somewhere in there. And the old Windex got it out for us. See? See the bottom again. Sweet! So. Get some of this excess water out. Okay. Next step, oh, I am going to change those because I got a big old mess on this hand. <clears throat> Go through a lot of gloves. Go through a lot of gloves. You know what? I am going to look real quickly here. I'm going to look for something and I'm going to come right back. Okay, so I found what I was looking for and I'm going to do something somewhat typical of, of you know, today. I'm going to use a stencil. I've got some um, hexagonal patterning. I think this is the smallest one we have, and I'm going to use this. This is from uh, Austin, uh, Brush for Hire, um, Death Ray Designs. Death Ray? Yeah, Death Ray Designs. And so this is uh, from his uh, workshop, 
Uh, they do the trick. We've used them a few times on other projects. You can see I've already used this one once before. You can kind of see there's some discoloration to it because I used it before on another project. Um, oh, my space screen. That's what I use it on. So I'm going to use it on the backs of these just for giggles because why not? And we're going to use the Terminus Stone. Uh, I suppose we could go with white uh, for the effect. I suppose we could. But we're not. So I don't want that much of a contrast in behind. I don't want it too contrasty, you know? So, we're going to grab some Terminus Stone here. We're going to slap this into the brush. I always say slap, but I don't mean... You know, it's not quite slapping. Excuse me. So, now then. Oh crap, I need a glove. Oh well. Just gonna get out of my paint my hand dirty as well. So we're gonna put these aside for the moment here. We'll grab the sing singular wall sections. Put these over here for the moment. We're not gonna do the cannon, uh, the AA turret with any of the hexagons, uh, just because I don't really feel like it needs it or anything like that. I guess it'll be the armor. Nah, nah, it doesn't need it. I don't even think the backs really need it. I mean, there's enough detail on the back here that's, you know, fairly interesting, right? And so here, I'm simply just going to put the stencil right in front of, yeah, like that. And then I am going to concentrate most of the spray right at that central, um, central area there. Like so. <laughs> and so there. Gives it an interesting little texture. Makes it feel a little bit more Eldar-ish, I suppose. I don't know. Let's give it a shot again. See if we can't line these lines up a little better. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Am I crazy or does it look better this way? I'm crazy. <laughs> it makes like not a lick of difference, really. <laughs> like, really. Anyway. Okay, let's get this color laid out. And so all I'm doing is concentrating most of the spray at that arch in the center of the uh, piece. Concentrating more of this bone color at the bottom. So you just get just that fade at the bottom of the piece. I'm not too worried about the lines being really, really sharp. I just want that, just that slight little hint of texture in there. That's all I'm looking for. That's all I need from these little stencils. Just that little hint of texture in there. Let's look at that. Of course, try to. The trickier one will be when I get to the bigger wall sections. That'll be the tricky one. Just like that. So just that little hint of texture in there. Keeps it visually interesting. Now here's something I never considered. Can these be washed? Can these stencils be washed? Because it's a, it's a mylar, and I don't see why they couldn't. Just like a subtle little bath, just kind of wash them off. I don't know. Or are we just supposed to replace them every time they just get dunked up? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Back to work. <laughs> Back to work. Okay. So.
it. Very interesting. Oop. And then. Let you guys kind of have a peek at that. I think it's kind of interesting. No? Yes? Clean off my dry tip. Because it's dry. So annoying. Inevitable is really what it is. It's inevitable that this is going to occur. You have to constantly keep that tip free of excess paint because it just it will stop the airflow of color. And you don't want that. The airflow must go. The spice must flow. Let's go like... Come on. This would be easier if I was using something like like a third set of hands or something, you know? La -dee -da, la -dee -da. Not too bad considering that I'm not really kind of, you know, measuring out exactly where you know, the lines are going, but oh well. It's not too bad, eh? Gives an interesting little texture to everything. Which way do I have the lines? Believe it or not, it does make sense which way you turn this. <laughs> it's not me being a crazy person, it's it's it actually makes sense. <laughs> Should have turned around again. Yeah, like this. Yeah, like that. So. <laughs> I swear I'm not a crazy person. I swear. Okay. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Be good. There we go. Ah, uh, BB. And start about halfway down that cliff. Yeah. <laughs> the power of stencils, I will tell you. The power of stencils. With like a minimal amount of effort, we've made these things look so much more visually interesting, you know? With an absolute minimum amount of work, and I've, I've used up too much paint here. Yeah, It's kind of soft when you have a bit of a distance, whereas the lines are a little tighter once it's a little bit closer. But that's fine. As I said before, just looking for that hint. And there. All the wall sections are done. That is that. Stencil, again, thanks Austin for the stencils because they totally kick ass. And now for the tricky part.
pouring your excess paint back into the paint pot. This is always a pain in the butt. Amen. Amen. A couple drops. I realize it's just a couple drops. Like, if I have a lot, then I'll dump it all out. But otherwise, usually I don't worry about it. If it's, like, you know, just like a you know, drop. But if it's, like, you know, a couple, couple drops, then I usually try and salvage it. Try and pour it back in because, again, waste not, want not. As the expression goes. And, you know, you don't want to waste. Just trying to get the paint flowing here. Trying to get some water going. It's so really cloudy in there. So next, I initially had considered, I don't know if I mentioned this in the previous video, uh, initially considered doing like OSL on the gemstones. Now I know it's a little over the top and you know it's not really my style but again you know it's something kind of fun something I don't normally do and you know these uh, these walls are kind of interesting and I kind of dig like the look of them again you know I like the kind of old school feeling that they have to them I kind of dig that and so I don't know. We'll see. But really, that's about it. It's, that's the airbrushing portion. Now, uh, next is just onto the um, onto the um, gemstones, really, and just kind of touching up some points. I don't know. Do you think like the um, do you think the interior and exteriors need like a little bit of edge highlighting, maybe? Yeah, I probably do. Uh, oh yeah, chevrons and stuff. I didn't do chevrons. Jeez, do they need chevrons? Do they need it? That's the question. Do they need it? Probably. I don't know. Let's see. Let's have a look. Because I know like the turret, I was going to put chevrons right on that shield in the middle. That's Because the Somme Han logo is going to go there. But like the wall sections, right? Do the wall sections need chevrons? I think I'm going to stop this video about now, but what do you guys think? Should there be chevrons on these walls, or do you think I could get away with just like a Sam Han logo here or there? There's not really a lot of room to slap any of the, the, um, the typical Eldar kind of symbols or anything like that on it, so I don't know. Hard to say, really. Hard to say, hard to say, arr, we made these arr. Just flush and me airbrush. I sit here and talk to myself. Or talk to the camera anyway. I'm talking to you guys, but technically I'm sitting here talking to myself. Technically. Technically. Because I don't know who's on the other end of this video, right? So technically, I'm talking to myself. I mean, could be somebody out there who really enjoys listening to me babble on about crap. Of course, it could be somebody out there who absolutely just hates my work. Either or is all right. Of course, why would somebody who hated my work, why would they listen to me, right? Unless, of course, you know, I was living rent-free in their head. <laughs> Which I know there's probably a few people out there that that is the case. And that's fine. Because I'm a jerk. <laughs> <clears throat> so, I think that's it for the airbrush nuke today. I think we've got a lot accomplished. Got a nice little texture going on there. I think it looks really kind of kick ass. It's gonna, I think it's going to look really sharp on the tabletop. And so, yeah, what do you guys think? Should I throw some chevrons on any of these things? Um, you know, Red Cross, uh, down. I don't know. Do you think they need it? Because I don't think every one needs it. Maybe every other one. 
but otherwise, yeah, um, I think it looks really, really snazzy. I do really like these walls. I think they're very fun. They do look the part. Hopefully, Buddy, um, you know, sells a lot of these. I know, apparently, we've purchased a bunch of stuff from this guy. So, hopefully, uh, you know, business does continue well for him. And, yeah. There we go. That's my Aegis defense line. Look at that crap. That's an Eldar Aegis defense line. Now, how fun is that? Like, look at it. It looks the part, well, I mean, some of it's not butted up properly, but I mean, that's it, man. I mean, and now my Eldars have somewhere to hide. <laughs> you know what I am thinking now? I think it does, the backside here does need a little edge highlight, like a little bit of bone white or something, just to edge highlight like the top parts and just kind of the outer perimeter. And I might as well do it with the red portions here. I don't know. I even was thinking of um, doing an edge highlight in gold or even like a zenithal highlight in gold, just a quick kind of, like in a brighter gold, almost silver maybe, even just silver, and then hitting it the entire thing again with the red, and maybe just leaving that hint of yellow at the bottom, the gold at the bottom. I was thinking of doing that, because I was playing around with the Angron red clear, and I really liked how it was looking. I also like how the transparent red sits on top of all the other colors and looks really sharp as well. So, I don't know, what do you guys think? Should it be more red? More red? Or more red? I think more red. Because, <laughs> I mean, it does, like, you know, it, it, it's, I didn't want this to look all the way Salmon, but I mean, I do want it to, you know, look Salmon, but I want it to fit with my army. But also, you know, be a little bit different as well, because, you know, I get a little bit bored painting the same damn crap all the time anyway, right? So, you know, this is a little bit of fun for me. You know, Chris is allowed to have fun once in a while too, you know. <laughs> so I think I'm going to end the video there. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, join me on Facebook, Way the Brush. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, happy war game. I'll check you guys out later. Peace.